There is a big developing story going on right now in college athletics, specifically with the Pac-12, or at least the ex-Pac-12, between Washington State University, Oregon State University, and the 10 schools that have decided to leave the Pac-12. Today, a judge granted WSU and OSU a restraining order against the Pac-12 and its commissioner. That is right, Washington State University and Oregon State University were granted a temporary restraining order against the Pac-12 and its, its presidents. Uh, looking at this article from Coug fan Jamie Vinek, in Colfax, Washington, Whitman County Superior Court judge granted Washington State and Oregon State the temporary restraining order they, they requested Friday to block the Pac-12's 10 departing schools from holding a meeting of presidents believed to have been called to change the, the conference's bylaws to prevent Washington State University and Oregon State University as the last two members from controlling the rights and revenues of the Pac-12. The judge stated, I'm going to put the brakes on any further meetings without a court decision. The judge did allow the Pac-12 schools to vote on any issue via email, such as an employee retention plan, but only so long as it is unanimously agreed upon. So Washington State and Oregon State would have to vote a yes for something to go through. Let's pause for a second and think back to when each university announced their departure from the Pac-12, because that's, this matters in the legal issues that are going on right now. So first off, June 30th, 2022, UCLA and USC announced the plans to leave the Pac-12 for the Big Ten Conference starting in 2024. On July 27th, 2023, Colorado announced that it would be leaving to rejoin the Big 12 starting in 2024. August 4th, 2023, Oregon and Washington announced plans to join the Big Ten in 2024. On the same day, Arizona, Arizona State, and Utah announced that they would follow Colorado to the Big 12, which would have left the Pac-12 with just four schools remaining. And then on September 1st, the ACC, the Atlantic Coast Conference, voted to add Stanford and Cal for the 2024 season, which means that the final two schools in the Pac-12 were now just Oregon State University and Washington State University. So the first schools in UCLA and USC announced way back in June of 2022 that they would be leaving the conference. The most recent teams announced September 1st uh, in Stanford and Cal that they would be leaving. Now, why does the date of announcement from each university matter? And why did WSU and OSU get this restraining order? Well, per this uh, Twitter chain from Matt Loveless, lots of good information here. Um, the September 13th meeting, which was supposed to happen this coming Wednesday between the, the Pac-12 presidents, uh, supposedly was to amend the Pac-12 bylaws. The attorney for the Pac-12 states that there's a clear admission of an intent to violate the bylaws, and the attorney said our goal is to apply the bylaws, not to rewrite them. Went on to say that the bylaws make clear that if an announcement happens before August 1st, 2024, that a university is to leave the conference, then it triggers automatic removal of voting rights. So that means that all the schools up to this point that announced their departure from the Pac-12 so all those 10 teams now do not have a right to vote in Pac-12 matters. And they go on to say that even though those universities didn't officially announce withdrawal, um, since they announced publicly that they were leaving, those announcements on social media and other places count as a withdrawal notice. So essentially the lawyers for the Pac-12, WSU and OSU now, are saying that they're not allowed to have their cake and eat it too, deciding the fate of the Pac-12 conference. What's going on right now is that the Pac-12 essentially is trying to determine what remaining assets and revenue are available. And since all those universities are playing in the Pac-12 this year, those 10 universities will be gone and playing in another uh, conference next year. Who gets the money this year? Who gets the money moving forward for what the Pac-12 is and will be? And essentially all 10 of those Pac-12 schools that announced their departure, they no longer have any voting rights in anything that goes on with the Pac-12. And those 10 schools don't have a right to decide the fate of Oregon State University and Washington State University. And also another reporter on Twitter states that the Pac-12 commissioner says that he wanted to discuss a retention plan for key employees. So the commissioner himself also revised scope of services, amending the bylaws to propose a conflict of interest policy. As she says, obviously OSU and WSU would not want this. In their complaint, they said other Pac-12 schools have a financial incentive to break up the conference. Clearly they do. She goes on to say that they aren't just talking about the departing schools wanting to break up the Pac-12. He's now stating the obvious that these schools are now com committed to a competitor, so they shouldn't be in control of the Pac-12. The school's lawyer then addresses the financial situation. He says the departing schools want to dissolve the conference. That way, the Pac-12's assets or money would be distributed equally, 
so that they can receive their equity stake on their way out of the door. And what's absolutely wild is that she says on Saturday night, OSU and WCU's lawyers received a doc stating that Pac-12 wanted to vote on Wednesday about how the Pac-12 is going to operate over the next 12 months. The proposal, Pac-12 would pay some of the money for the transition costs for departing members. So did you hear that correctly? Essentially, the 10 teams that are leaving the conference want the conference to pay for them to leave. Oh, and get this, while the hearing was going on, the Pac-12 commissioner was in Montana, out of the state. It's just amazing to see how sloppy this is getting, and I can only imagine what's gonna be coming out over the coming weeks. I'll say that this entire process has been an absolute cluster, and it's really a shame what has gone on in the Pac-12, um, especially being a Washington State University fan. I feel for the WCU and OSU fans to where, where the two teams left remaining. Um, there are some potential loopholes, which I'll get into in a second, for us teams, we'll see what happens, but really this is all a money grab. Those 10 teams wanted you know, more media right deals. The Pac-12 network was a failure. It's really all just a money grab and those 10 universities are seeking out those new media rights for more potential revenue. And the thing that really isn't being considered is that it, it doesn't just affect football, it affects every sport, every athlete. You now have two universities in Cal and Stanford where, which are essentially on the Pacific Ocean on the West Coast, having to travel with all of their sports to the East Coast, the Atlantic Coast League. So that's, I mean, you know, whatever the flight time is for that, plus the three hour time differential, all these different factors that go into athletics and, and planning out schedules and travel. It doesn't just affect football, it affects every sport, it affects every athlete. Here's the map of the new Big Ten. It's not quite as bad as the ACC difference, but you have all those West Coast teams that are gonna be traveling to the Midwest and also the East Coast now. And then here's the map of the Big 12. This one definitely makes more sense than the others. And it only makes sense that these conferences change their name with the changes in size of conference. The Big 10 is now becoming the Big 18. The Big 12 is now becoming the Big 16. The Pac-12 is now becoming the Pac-2, or as some are calling it, the Tupac. But there might be a loophole that the Tupac will be able to uh, play with in the coming years. If you take a look, so NCAA bylaws require a conference to have at least eight members, but there is a two-year grace period to get back to that number. Silly as it sounds, the Pac-12 could theoretically operate as a two-team conference in 2024 and 2025, with Oregon State and Washington State largely making their own schedules. So what this could mean is that Washington State and Oregon State can make a relatively cake schedule for the next, for the two years after this year. And if both teams are, you know, like 12 and 0, then we might just see them in the playoffs. But in reality, all of these schools that were in the Pac-12 decide to be in a major conference, including Washington State University and Oregon State University. If they aren't, then that's just silly. You take a look at the current rankings as of week or after week two. There's now eight teams in the Pac-12 that are ranked in the top 25. USC is ranked five, Washington is eight, Oregon is 12, Utah 15, Oregon State is 16, Colorado 17, Washington State University is 23, and then UCLA is 25. All of these schools are serious athletic programs, serious football programs. All of them des deserve to be in a big conference. For more information on what's going on with the Pac-12 currently, make sure to join the live stream tomorrow night across platforms. I'll be joined by Cougue fans Dylan Haw and then 1080 Sports, the fans Will Ortner. We'll be talking all things Pac-12 and what's going on. Uh, they have some really great insight to what's happening. And if you're a fan of this type of content, make sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.